Hello and welcome. My name is Manuel Quintana with Pragmatic Works. And here in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Power BI licensing, but specifically around capacity. So this conversation generally revolves more at an organizational level. Now, of course, all of licensing kind of deals with, uh, you know, the, at the organizational level, but I literally mean how we're purchasing these resources, how we are acquiring this. And it's going to be in the realm of what's called capacities. Now I'm going to use some of the terms that are kind of being spoken out there. That's going to be a bit more familiar. Really what we're going to be discussing is the difference between having Power BI premium or not. But it should be noted that premium is a specific, what's called a SKU for dedicated capacity. Basically, Microsoft and Power BI, they sell various different products under dedicated capacity, one of those being premium. So we're going to talk about licensing when it comes to capacities. In a future video, I'm going to discuss and break down kind of the individual license that can be associated to users. And that would be free Power BI Pro license or the newer Power uh, uh, Premium per user license. That's the new one, the PPU. It's a mouthful, right? Those are going to be discussed later because those individually give different types of features. But at the same time, the two capacities we're going to discuss in today's video also have its own kind of set of features. Now, does it matter if we're in shared or if we're in premium? You can have free, pro, PPU users in either type of environment. Just think about those first three, free, pro, and premium per user. Those are things that are tied to an individual, what I would be assigned. And then capacity is at the organizational level. And that is what we're going to focus on today. So it breaks down and really to two simple things. Power BI is divided into two types of capacities. You have shared which I would say is kind of like the standard uh, kind of introductory experience you'll get with Power BI, and then you have dedicated. And that's it. It's really that straightforward. So let's take the moment and break down each one of these. When we talk about a shared capacity, and once again, in a shared capacity, users can be free, they could be pro, they could be PPU, that is a shared capacity. We're basically talking about using shared resources. Now, if you just want to kind of take any sort of image, just remember, when we're using Power BI, we're using the service, we're leveraging that Microsoft backbone ecosystem, right? The data is being held and securely held in Microsoft data centers. And in order to allow our users to view reports, process reports, refresh reports, these, these are workloads that naturally take resources to process. And in a shared capacity environment, basically any organization which hasn't explicitly purchased dedicated capacity, those resources are limited and they are shared actually amongst other organizations. Now you don't have access or privy to where those are being used or how many are being used. It's just there are a set number of resources. So that's why maybe if you've been working and you've set a refresh for your reports uh, to happen at 7 a.m., but when you look at the refresh history of it, maybe it started at 7.07, 7.37, 7.22. It doesn't start at seven. And that's because possibly at the moment that it was supposed to begin, seven o'clock, those resources weren't available to process that request. Because you're in a shared capacity, those resources must be available to us. So that's basically the idea of shared, but with it come some limitations, right? With a shared capacity, there's a limitation on how, what, how large your Power BI reports can be to deploy them out to the service, right? We're talking about the powerbi.com, we're talking about the Power BI service. In a previous video I did, which talks about import versus direct query, we briefly mentioned this, that there's limitations. This is where that limitation occurs. You do not have dedicated capacity. Your Power BI reports cannot exceed one gigabyte. It actually has to be less than one gigabyte, all right? And in that other video, I talked about, hey, how can you, you know, direct query could be something that could help you here. That being said, also, when you, you know, the reports that you do deploy out to the Power BI service, there's a limitation on how many refreshes you can do per day. Eight, that's it. For each data set, you can refresh up to eight times. The ninth one will just fail. So that is a limitation that is tied to shared. And one of the biggest aspects of the shared capacity that sometimes is a little bit unknown or misunderstood, especially for new adopters to Power BI, is when in a shared capacity, when discussing the idea of how do we individually license the people in our organization, right, the whole free, pro, and premium per user, this actually has an impact here. The question is, okay, in a shared capacity, who needs to have what type of license? And really, at the end of the day, anybody who's going to be working with a Power BI report, whether I'm a report writer, 
whether I'm managing something inside of the Power BI service, or if I'm just simply the end user who wants to just consume the report through the Power BI service. See, anybody who's gonna to touch the Power BI report has to have a pro license. And by standard means, the MSRP on that is gonna be $9.99 per month per user. So in a shared capacity, someone's gonna access this report in the traditional means through the service, they must have a pro license, even if they are only read-only users. Now there's other methods around this, but generally the main best practice ways, if you're looking to share with users so they don't have to have a license, that's gonna be in the dedicated capacity realm. There's technically also something called embedded capacity, but I'll discuss that here in a moment. Just know, you don't have dedicated, pretty much everybody has to have pro if they wanna look at this report, right? Now this has been changed recently, right? The way this is done, you still are assigned individual license. Your Office, 360, your Office 365 administrator still says, here's this user, are they gonna have a free license? Are they gonna have a pro license? Are they gonna have a premium per user license? That is still something that's toggled on at an individual user basis. But there's been an adjustment to this as well, pretty much with the introduction of premium per user, that it, this is something that is decided also at the workspace level. So now in the Power BI service, when you create a workspace, you must define its capacity level. Is it gonna be a pro capacity? Is it gonna be a premium per user capacity? Is it gonna be a dedicated capacity or even an embedded capacity? So now we actually have to make decisions in two different places. So for this and this scenario, technically workspaces that would fall strictly under shared would be your pro as well as your premium per users. If you wanna leverage premium capacity, dedicated capacity, you need to create a workspace that specifies that. A little different. But here's some of these limitations. And shared capacity, as you see here, really not meant for enterprise deployments. Because if you're talking about sharing with hundreds, thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of people, think about that cost per license. And you need to individually manage those licenses. Not great for enterprise deployment. The solution that is out there, the solution that is for enterprise deployment would be dedicated capacity, which has multiple price points here, but we start at a roughly $5,000 per month. Now, obviously that's a larger figure than the 999 I described, but just see here, when we talk about dedicated capacity, what it means, how it's not as gross of a difference as you might imagine. With dedicated capacity, this will give us features to work with significantly larger data sets. That limitation of the one gigabyte has then effectively been lifted. And the limitations, if you look on kind of the Microsoft documentation, it'll say 100 terabytes. Um, effectively, it is you can have a bring your own storage type of scenario. So you can work with extremely large data sets for imported reports. So you basically one gigabyte phew, gone. If you go the route of using direct query, because you can use direct query in a shared capacity, but with dedicated, you'll get more throughput. Input, output, it'll just have more dedicated resource available, so there'll be more performance there. Also, as far as refreshes go, we're moving from eight refreshes per day to 48 refreshes per day. And the reason why that number might seem interesting, um, when you go through the user interface of the powerbi.com service, we are only allowed to, create refreshes on the hour and half hour. So there's 48 points in the day. So basically you can schedule all potential refresh times. And those refresh times are absolutely gonna be far closer to starting when you say to start. Because at the end of the day, what is dedicated capacity? You're simply purchasing dedicated resources. That's what it is. You literally purchase virtual memory virtual CPUs, you are no longer sharing a pool of resources with other individuals. That's shared capacity. Here, you've got your own resources that you allocate accordingly. And you can see there's some links here, just official Microsoft documentation for like metrics and all these fun things that you can look into. But one of the biggest things when it comes to dedicated, and this is where that kind of gap in the pricing might kind of make more sense here is when you have Dedicated capacity, which once again is something purchased at an organizational level, any workspace that you specify that will be a dedicate, dedicated capacity workspaces, reports that are stored there can be shared with an unlimited amount of internal and external users. You can share those reports with as many people as you want and they do not have to have a pro license. So that's why this fits in that enterprise realm. 
that whole, all those potential 999s washed away. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to manage or maintain that either. The only individuals in a dedicated capacity scenario that need to be licensed are those that would be in the Power BI service working inside of workspaces. Basically, those who are going to be managing and maintaining those reports, potentially managing and maintaining, sharing those reports. So that is where that price difference makes a little more sense. Now, when you purchase premium, because there's, once again, premium is one version of dedicated capacity. There's a bunch. There's PSQs, that's premium. There's ASQs, Azure Embedded. There's a bunch of different options. So if this is something that interests you, definitely something that you want to check out online. Along with it, you also get a license for Power BI Report Server. You get some additional AI capabilities. Um, if you've ever noticed in Power BI, in the Power Query Editor, there's AI insights. You have sentiment analysis. You have image recognition. And you have... Um, uh, the other one is ML models. Those require dedicated capacity, a report that must be stored in a dedicated capacity workspace. There's a lot that comes with doing dedicated, but there is a price tag associated with it. So you have to take the effort. You got to take the, you know, try to get the understanding of which is the best ROI. And the best thing you can do in this scenario is absolutely reach out to your Microsoft rep if you're uncertain and they can help with that discussion. I mean, you can go, as you can see right here, to Microsoft documentation. You can see right here, here's pricing and product comparison. If you just type in dedicated uh, capacity pricing, main documentation, $9.95 for a pro license, $20 for premium. Once again, we'll go over like these individual licensing uh, models in the next video. And then there's per capacity. But notice when you go to per, per capacity, you would have to contact them. It's a larger purchase. Is this the right purchase? 5,000 is actually is the lowest price, the lowest capacity tier. It can scale all the way up to like 25,000 per month, but it depends. What type of performance are you needing? What type of performance are you looking for? So there are lots of choices, lots of options. And as you can see, you can set up like auto scaling and lots of different things in this case. So as far as, you know, looking to see, should I be looking to buy it? Something you definitely want to communicate because of the scale of this purchase. And once again, this is an organizational decision. Definitely check out the official Microsoft documentation. And you can find other articles, other documents on what it looks like, how to buy it. All of this is standard Microsoft documentation. So definitely do that research. Definitely check that out. Once again, though, this is going to be a decision that's made at an organizational level, but it has impacts all the way down. Critical. Dedicated is the true enterprise deployment. So let's take a moment and I'm going to go into my Power BI portal and I'm going to go ahead and show you when we create the workspace, what this experience looks like. If you haven't created a workspace in a while or you're new to this process, definitely check out some of our other more introductory videos. But I'm just going to show you this kind of new element with workspaces and this is where you need to make that decision. What type of workspace is this so I can uh, support the corresponding type of workload? In the environment that we're going to see, we don't have dedicated capacity. So that option will be grayed out for me, but we'll be able to see it nonetheless. So let's head over to my Power BI service. So here I are, here I, here we are. I'm logged in. This is our Pragmatic Works uh, account. And you can see if I wanted to, I can go to workspaces. We have a ton of workspaces, but the idea is, and you know, you can see if I go over here, I can always see I'm a pro user. Um, but if I go over here to workspaces, I can create a workspace. And everything seems normal at the, surf, you know, at the surface level. We can say this is my you know, uh, ca capacity demo workspace, you know, something like that. Um, and put a description on that. It's under advanced that we need to be making sure we're taking a look at now. We now have the option of choosing the license mode for this. We have pro, which is, I would say, your more kind of default standard workspace that we're used to from the past. Now you have a new workspace called premium per user. This new individual license isn't part of the dedicated capacity, but it does give these individual users some of the features that we talked about from dedicated capacity. So it's an interesting approach. Some of those kind of performance related benefits we discussed are available now in non dedicated environments, but it's allocated in specific to premium per user individuals. So you'd have to create a workspace that is specifically for PPU and only individuals who are licensed for PPU can actually be part of that workspace. That's kind of what kind of brought us into this space. 
And then you'll notice beyond that, we have a premium per capacity workspace. For all intensive purposes, this is just like the pro workspace, except when you specify premium per capacity, you now have to tie it to your premium node or your whatever your dedicated capacity node is. Those are dedicated resources that you have created, that you have purchased, you associate it with it. And that's how Power BI knows this report, which is in a premium capacity workspace, can take advantage of all of these great features. That's how like this report that lives in a premium capacity workspace, I can share that with an infinite number of people, but the same report in the pro workspace, everyone I share it with here has to have a pro license, right? Hopefully that's sinking in. Hopefully um, check out the next video that we're gonna look at, which is gonna be called Power BI Licensing, Individual Licensing. And I'm gonna break down the pro, premium per user, free, all that fun stuff. But here it is. This is how you ensure you take advantage if you have dedicated capacity to make sure that you're using those features. You have to have that right workspace. So quick video, licensing, but more at the organizational level, at the top level, but this has ramifications all the way down. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you got some details and information. It drives you hopefully in the right direction if you're in that beginning phase and figure out what do we need for our organization, for our company, and look forward to some of those future videos to extend this knowledge as well. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.